want to introduce our speaker for today, the beautiful Reverend Jenny Seely. She's a lifelong resident of Hampton Road and has been a realtor for over, over 40 years. Jenny has been a member of the chapel since August of 2019 and has previously served as vice president on the board of directors and is now serving as an officiate minister with the Metaphysical Chapel of Life. She is the owner and operator of the Finally Unified, a spiritual center with two locations serving the Tidewater area. Her love of spirit is her driving force to hold development circles, teach classes, and support others in their dream of embracing their God-given gifts. Every person Jenny encounters is supported in their own unique style to find the truth of who they are. She loves all kind of healing and especially the releasing of trapped emotions from our DNA and our cellular, cellular membranes. She teaches the Laying One of Hands spiritual healing training program at the chapel. And during the summer at Jenny's place, she and other healers offer spiritual healing in her pool. She enjoys being introduced to all kinds of philosophies that open her mind to all of the possibilities and loves sharing her experiences with others to do the same. She walks in love in this great infinite universe. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Jenny Seal to the pool. Thank you, LaShannon. Thank you. And it is my honor today to serve with LaShannon. This is a, I love it. And she's one of my healers. I call them my healers. I'm sorry, guys. But when you take my healing classes, like you're my healer now. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But everything that's happened today goes along with my message. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about channeling. What does it mean to you? What does channeling mean? Well, today has been an amazing day for me. You know, it's always normally about me, but I had an amazing healing with Elizabeth, who I felt was stirring the pot, right? Getting all those emotions out and all that. And then she brought me down nice and calm. Then I had a healing with Lori that kind of raised me up again. Isn't that kind of like the meditation LaShana just did? LaShannon, I, I want to steal that for my healing pool, because if any of you want to come to my healing pool, we probably only got a few more weeks if the temperature stays hot. You know, <laughs> As soon as it gets cold, we have to do it around the pool. But that is like the pool of... <laughs> yeah, when, after board meeting. <laughs> so uh, it's open every day. So any day. I might not be there, but it's still open. You just have to tell me, secure the dogs. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but LaShana in my pool is like the pool of Bethesda, and that's what she brought in. She channeled that beautiful message, didn't you? You channeled it. So that is what channeling is all about, is connecting with spirit, right? And allowing spirit to move you in your speech, in your feelings, in your talk, anything that you do. So the beautiful song, Imagine, was even channeled. That was channeled. So most creative people, when they sit down to either write a book, we have several authors in here, write a book, uh, do anything like that, do their art, they're channeling spirit from the other side. They're channeling their higher self. Someone on the other side is inspiring them to do that. John was inspired in one session to write that song on his grand piano in May of 1971. He sat down and wrote the whole song in just a little bit of time. And um, Yoko Ono watched him do it, and he was inspired by one of the poems that she had written. And so when you're inspired like that, it's like that thing that is inside of you that's like, I have to do this, right? So one of the things I was pointing out to is I love Reverend Bill Whitley. He always likes to start. He's one of my mentors, too. He always likes to start with a Bible verse. So I'm starting with Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible, right? All things are possible. We can't even imagine that, right? We can't imagine everything being possible with this God source, universal God source that's all around us all the time. Um, just recently, I had an opportunity, I'll talk about in a little bit of watching a video where Wayne Dreyer, Dwyer was interviewing a physical medium, Michael Shane, who's coming to the area soon, right? And he said, 
I've always said, have an open mind to everything and be attached to nothing. Don't have a belief about it. Just have an open mind and see how it resonates with you, right? I thought that was so cool and I'm going to steal it. So. so how is your mind engaged in channeling? So this is the biggest thing about channeling and trance channeling or trance mediumship is you stepping out of the way, right? You got to get your mind out of the way and allow spirit to blend with you. Allow spirit to blend. And so in my, um, that's what I started out finding out I was a medium by being a trance medium. I went into trance and gave a message back in like 2000 or something, 2010. So in 2013, when I started my spiritual awakening, I wanted to find out more about this trance mediumship, but nobody speaks of trance mediumship. It's scary. First thing you say to someone, I want to do trance. And they're like, I don't want anybody to jump inside of me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the merging, the blending of spirit where the two souls become one, right? That's what LaShannon did up here. She opened herself up to allow the two souls to become one and spoke a beautiful healing meditation. That to me is trans mediumship. That to me is channeling, right? But remember, you know, natural law. If you haven't learned it, learn it. Natural law, the number one natural law is mentalism. Law of mentalism, what you think is your reality. So if you think I'm going to sit here and merge with something that is going to take me over, you have to remember, you always have the power. You are always in charge. Your soul knows and you are in charge of that soul. So if you need something for a life experience over here, yeah, maybe you might have that. But if you set your intention that you are going to merge with spirit and it's going to be for your highest and best good, all things are good, right? All things are good. Spirit is intelligent. They're very intelligent and they'll give you whatever you want. So watch your words because you're speaking your truth as you're sitting there. So because there was so much, I started having development circles at my house. So my house is all about trance mediumship. You know, we're going to sit, we're going to figure out this blend of spirit. And so that's what we do. We know that there's levels of consciousness, right? Because right now you're awake, you're alive, you're sitting in your chair, you're in this now moment. But as soon as you start getting relaxed and you start moving into a different consciousness, now spirit can talk to you a little bit, right? And um, Stanley gave a great lecture the other day about getting out of your mind, how to do that. And that's what we practice, getting out of your mind. There's several different levels of consciousness. And when you train yourself to get to that level, you can do amazing things. Look at Edgar Casey. He went to the, so you have the awake state, the focus, relaxed, the lucid dreaming. Jeff's whole thing, if you haven't seen it, see it. I mean, I, I'm still trying to listen to the whole thing, but his thing on lucid dreaming about setting the intention when you go to bed about what you want to occur in your dreams. I've been doing it. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed soon. because <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't remember my dreams. <laughs> so, but then you go into this other state where Ed Casey went into a sleep, right? He went into a trance. If y'all don't know him at the ARE in Virginia Beach, he went into a trance and gave amazing information about healing that we still use today, right? And he got that from spirit. That wasn't him. So the main thing about mediumship is getting out of the way. All of us up here that are mediums that serve the church, we all channel information. I mean, when I'm saying, I hope, anyway, that when I'm standing up here giving messages, it's coming from spirit and not my head, right? And sometimes you have to question, wait a minute, wait a minute, is that me or is that spirit, you know? And believe me, when you're receiving the message, you better pay attention to see if that is coming from spirit, because mediums are mediums, you know? We try our best, but sometimes our little mind gets in the way, right? And we're learning to get that out of the way. So when you're receiving a message from me, you're receiving pure spirit. 
pure spirit messages. May not be one that you want to hear, but it is a message from spirit. So just recently, I had a golden opportunity for one of my other mentors, who is Reverend Reed Brown from Roanoke, and he's at the United Metaphysical Chapel of Church, Church in Rona. So I was given the opportunity to go teach a class. Guess what, Reverend Bill? Laying on hands healing. <laughs> it was so much fun. So I went there to teach the class on laying on hands. If you have ever gone on a spiritual retreat with 10 or 12 people, if you haven't done it, do it because it's so much fun. You got 10 strangers sitting in a room that don't even know each other. And they, by the end, they're bound by friends, friendship. So I taught the laying on hands healing class. We had Qigong, we had a spiritual uh, shamanic journey. We had all this stuff. And then Reverend Brown gave us messages. Well, he's just an amazing, he like on a sheet of paper, he gives you fillet reading. Mm-hmm. On a sheet of paper, you put all the names of the spirit you want to talk to, three to five, some questions. He folds up, you fold up the paper, you hand it to him. He puts it in the table without even looking at it and gives you every name that's on that list mm-hmm. and it answers your questions. Now, okay, this is my goal, but I do have to remember he's 81 years old and been doing it for 60 years. So I don't know if I'll live that long, but that's my next on my list to try to do. So he's a beautiful trance medium. He brings in spirit to talk to you. We had a beautiful session. But at the end, I said, well, come on, let's try a trance session, see what happens at the end. We had two different sessions with these people that had never sat in trance before. And so I'm like, come on, some of most of them were medium, some were. And I'm like, let's sit. To me, There's reasons for communication with spirit, and mainly for me, it's healing. So this whole weekend was about healing, and it's about healing ourselves first, right? All these little emotions and things of fear and blah, blah, blah that we have, and we got to get rid of. So in this session, it was absolutely amazing because we set the intention for whatever the person sitting in that circle needed to receive, and every one of them received healing from their loved ones, could feel their loved ones there. And to me, that's what trans mediumship is all about. You get to feel, you get to feel your loved one right there beside you. Because there is a veil, we say there's a veil between this physical world and the spiritual world, but there's no veil, it's the one we put there. We put a veil there, there really isn't one. They're here for our love and our support. I've taken many trans classes in London and Arizona and uh, across Maryland, talked to a lot. There's not a lot of trans mediums out there and there's not a lot of physical mediums out there. But if you ever get a chance to go, go, because they're absolutely beautiful and it's all about love. I love the um, teacher that taught in Arizona was all about number one, spirit wants to prove unconditional love that's it and they are ready for you to be open and ready to receive so you want to talk about healing you want to talk about healing when someone sits in a circle and you're surrounded by love of that circle and then you're surrounded by your loved ones who maybe you feel a little bit of grief feel a little bit that you weren't there for them you didn't see them we had one woman that she, in one year, she lost four people and never got to see any of them before they passed. And she had so many problems with that. All four of them came to visit her and circled around her and gave her love. That is okay. I mean, that's what true healing is all about, right? And so to me, that's what trans mediumship is. And so physical mediumship is a whole nother ball game when you're talking about apports and stuff like that. Apports are things that spirit give us from the other side of life. They drop it right in front of you. Mm -hmm. So like, I know you guys have had a penny just appear out of nowhere. I know you guys have had a feather just appear. You've had some kind of sign or symbol that spirit is right there with you. I love being in my pool and just talking. Out. I'm always talking about spiritual stuff because that's what I do. And so I'm talking spiritual stuff and a white feather just lands right in the pool. I'm like, thank you, spirit. Thank you, spirit. 
on the retreat, I got an app board. I was so excited. Hello, I got an app board. And I got, it was just a little piece of glass, but it was an app board. Spirit said, here, I'm going to give you this gift. The very first circle we ever had, we had a ring come to us. So physical mediumship is a whole different ball game. If you ever have a chance, we have Michael Shane coming into the area. If you have a chance, look him up. It's amazing. Michael Shane actually interviewed him and explained why. Why do we have this connection with spirit? Why is spirit showing us things from the other side? And it was kind of like to prove, to prove that with God, all things are possible. With God, the school report is another whole thing that they went and they studied for five years. They sat there and studied. I had a chance to study with him for one year before he passed. And that was amazing. But he, they actually had a dog leave the house and come out into the yard. Spirit moved the dog from the house into the yard. So transportation, all this stuff is going to be coming to reality here real soon. More and more people are learning about channeling. More and more people are opening up to spirit. And you have the same opportunity to do it. Each one of us have this gift. Each one of us have it. And you can do it just walking down the street, in your bedroom, in that meditation. Meditation is the most important thing. In meditation, you surrender. You surrender to the knowing that spirit is there to help you, talk to you. You allow you allow for the beautiful connection of spirit and you trust, you trust that everything, everything that happens for you is in your highest and best good. There's always a reason and there's always something that spirit wants you to know. So that is just my message for you. And if you are, if any of you on Zoom or any of you give some feedback to the chapel that you would be interested in something like that. And I will be glad to share it with you because it's an amazing experience. You come to the healing circles, you feel the energy. No one could have ever told me that you could feel that healing energy through Zoom. <laughs> but you can't. It is absolutely amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve spirit. Thank you for allowing me to share my story about trans mediumship that it just excites me. So, you know, that's who I am. I love it. And thank you, most importantly, for allowing me to serve with Lachane. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Namaste.